Snowbird's hopes have not melted. Welcome to Chrysler Arena in Ann Arbor. The Michigan High School Athletic Association presents the Class D Boys Basketball Championship Game. Tonight's game is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware, Hudsonville Ice Cream Company, Cherry 7 Up, and Aquinas College. Now with the Class D Championship game, here's Rick Berkey and Ed Phelps. Good evening and welcome back to the Michigan High School Basketball Championships on the Michigan High School Sports Network. I'm Rick Berkey along with Ed Phelps back at Chrysler Arena for the Class D title game between the Beale City Aggies and the Northport Wildcats. Well, we're going to see an awful lot of points in this Class D championship game. Both teams average well over 80 points per game. For Beale City, one guy to keep an eye on, Jason Gottlieber. He can fill it. Gottlieber is the king of the three-point shots thus far. He leads the tournament, averaging 15.6 points per game this season. And for Northport, a young man that people are hearing across the state, Sander Scott, just a junior. Sander Scott is the all-time leading career scorer coming into this tournament, over 1,500 points. He's only a junior, averaged 25.6 points per game this year. Beale City and Northport after the Class D title, and we'll come back with the introduction of the starting lineups in just a moment. And back at Chrysler Arena once again for the Class D State Championship game here. Beale City and Northport about to go after it. Beale City comes in 25 and one, Northport 20 and four. Beale City's uh, only loss, in fact, came in uh, triple overtime. Before we get to the introduction of the starting lineups, please join us for our Star Spangled Banner. And this time the national anthem will be sung by Miss Vicki Fair. She's a former East Jackson High School student currently enrolled at Jackson Community College. Vicki Fair. than fair rendition of our Star Spangled Banner. And before the Class D game, let's get the starting lineup from our public address announcer, Howard King. Northport and Beale City. Now here are the starting lineups. First of all, for Northport, at forward, a 5'8 senior, number 24, Jason Stowe. At forward for Beale City, 6'2 senior, number 20, Jason Gottlieber. The young man we spotlighted, just under 16 points a game. Northport forward, 6'2 junior, number 42, Daniel Stowe. Jason and Daniel of the Stowe family. Beale City forward, 5'9 senior, number 24, Dan Pung. Pung averaging eight points a game for the Aggies. At center for Northport. 6'2 junior, number 40, Jason Corson. 
Corsan averaging 10.6 points per game for the Wildcats Real from City Northport. Center, 6-2. Junior, number 32, Tim Block. Block averaging 10.5 points, just a junior. The guards for Northport, 5'8", senior. Number 14, Frederick Thomas. Watch Frederick Thomas, he's a feisty one for Northport. Real City guard, 5'11", senior. Number 12, Matt Fox. Northport's other guard, a six-foot junior. Number 34, Sander Scott. And there's Sander Scott. Keep an eye on him. He City's can light guard, it. 5'11", junior. Number 30, Todd Schaefer. One of the good football players for Beale City. This will be an interesting game with Northport. Beale Northport City defeated Martin yeah, last night in the Class D semis. Interestingly enough, it was those same two teams that met in the Class D state championship game in football back in the Silverdome. For Beale City, that may have been their biggest game of the season. They'll have to get back up again for this one. Our officials tonight, Jerry Edwards from Scandia, up in, way up in northern Michigan, and Bob Drent from Charlevoix, right there between uh, Traverse City and Petoskey. Bruce Caswell from North Adams is the uh, alternate. I did not know where Scandia was until we talked to Mr. Uh, Harrison. Scandia up there by Munising and all that good stuff. Well, neither team with much height, really, here in this game, so that should be a, a washout. Now, you would be a power forward for one of these teams, Rick. <laughs> And that's stretching it. <laughs> this is going to be a lot of fun. All right, as you said, Ed, both teams can score. We're underway here. Right off the bat, Fred Thomas. Good tip in by Jason Corson. Neither team will slow it down. They will run. Gottlieber launches and gets three right away. He has more three-pointers than any other player in this tournament this year. Turner. Thomas turned it over. And I don't think there are many people left in either Beale City or Northport tonight. I think the cities might be vacant. Folks uh, down from the southern part of the state, not familiar with them, will let you little know more about their geographic location. Jumper outside, doesn't go for Gottlieber. Followed up and in, though. Tim Block. Beale City on top by three. Sander Scott brings it up and now hands to Thomas. Sander Scott did not have a good game of the semifinals last night, but his coach says he's never had two bad games in a row. Inside slapped away, but a foul on Northport. Jason Stowe tried to block off Matt Fox from getting that pass, and he picks up the foul, number 24 there. First foul of the game. Good, enthusiastic following for both these clubs. Gottlieber, nice pass inside the block who hits the second field goal. Beale City with a five point lead. Thomas up in the air, and this will be a foul on Gottlieber. Pass took a little bit too long to get there, but it did cause the foul. Back to what we mentioned, Northport up in the Traverse City area, Northport all the far is, end of the peninsula up there. If you if you use the mitten as an example of Michigan, it's right up there at the tip of the baby finger, about 35 miles northwest of Traverse City, right on Lake Michigan. Beautiful community. Beale City up in the Mount Pleasant area. Yeah, just to the west, farming community, most known for its football, as far as athletics are concerned. Turnaround pop by Corson. He's got two field goals. He gets Northport back within three. Launched by Block from the outside. <laughs> Block three for three from the floor. Sanders still good, pass inside. Shot doesn't go, but it's followed by Stowe. Oh, and remember, it's two Stowe's out there. That's Daniel Stowe. Daniel Stowe. Near steal, but a good heads up play by Tim Block, keeping it in the hands of Beale City. I'll tell you one thing, these kids have got to be in shape to play at this pace. Quick entry to Gottlieb, where the shot doesn't go. A little sneak play in there. They got yeah. it into him, caught him flat-footed, but they didn't get the shot to drop. Sanders Stowe looking for his first shot of the game. Sanders Scott, rather. There you go. Corner shot doesn't go. And a rebound by Gottlieb. Fox on the baseline, way underneath, a little too far, but Dan Pong has the board. Steal inside by Pong in the hoop. 
Five point lead for Beal City. We've got five and a half to go in the first quarter. Neither of these teams have met a shot they haven't liked to take. Whoa! Stowe! Little dipsy do on the pass from Fred Thomas there. Fox for three, but a whistle and a travel. I want to see which one of these two teams is going to play a slowdown game. Answer C, none of the above, I think. Right. Timeout oh. on the floor, 5.13 to go. And with 5.13 left in the first quarter, Beale City leads Northport 11-8 on the Michigan High School Sports Network. All right, back at Chrysler Arena. Wild and Woolly, first three minutes. We haven't even played three minutes. 19 points scored. Beale City having a three-point lead over Northport. Sanders, Scott inside, followed up. Rebound control by Beale City. Outside, Todd Schaefer. Got Lieber from the corner, doesn't get it. Good position by Jason Stowe, then a stolen back. Oh, nice feed, Matt Fox puts the shot up. Oh, it almost fell. Fox will go for two. Jason Stowe picks up the foul. He has both the fouls called against Northport. Gets the first. Fox is a 5'11 senior averaging 12.6 points per ball game. And he gets them both. For a 13-8 ball, ball game, Rick. Five point advantage for Beale City as Northport brings it up. Boy, they're really doing a job defensively so far on Sander Scott. Oh, a and nice feed inside. The shot doesn't go for Jason Stowe, but he gets his own rebound and draws a foul. Scott is doing what he can do with all that defensive pressure, and that's trying to find the man to pass to. He's done. Watch it again, Sander Scott from the top. Fine pass to Jason Stowe. He misses the shot, but he stays with it. And draws the foul on Gottlieber. So Gottlieber with two fouls now for Beale City. First substitution coming into the game for Beale City. Dave Shahan will come in off the of bench number 40, and he will replace Gottlieber. Coach can't afford to lose Gottlieber early in the ball game with a foul, so he's going to bring him out and let him uh, take a breather for a while. He's got two. He's chasing uh, 5'11 junior. His pace might be a little bit quick for Northport. I think they maybe like to slow it down just a little bit. Jason Stowe gets the second. Pass ahead controlled. Todd Schaefer out front now. Looking at this zone defense, Schaefer right. reverses. Matt Fox will launch it. Rebound by Jason Corson. Sanders Scott ahead of the pack. Boy, he knows what to do with it. First points of the game for Scott. Over 1,500 in his career, 1,563 coming in today. Whistle away from the ball, three seconds, gives it back to Northport. We are midway through our first quarter. At this stage, Ed, both teams on a 100-point pace. Oh, yeah. Steal inside. Whoa. Fox didn't get it to drop and commits a foul in frustration. First foul on Fox. Just a common foul. North Port will inbound against this Aggie press. See what North Port does with the pressure. They've been bothered just a little bit by it. The ball inbound to Thomas. Thomas across the timeline. Dishes inside and a steal by Todd Schaefer. Schaefer's a nice player. Matt Fox looks at it. Dishes it inside to Pung. Rebound Sander Scott. He'll bring it up himself. Looks for the screen, it's not there. Lost it, got it back. 
forces from 10, and doesn't get it. And a foul on Fred Thomas. He's starting to sense a little bit of frustration yeah. in Sanders Scott. He's used to getting shots off, and it's a great job there being done so far by Beale City. Well, again, the pace, I think uh, Beale City might be a little bit quicker than Northport is used to playing. And if that happens, it usually is frustrating for you. Schaefer running the show out front in the corner, Fox. Falls from 16 and nails it. Fox with four. Three point lead for Beale City. Jason Stowe partially blocked. Rebound Fox. Schaefer, jumper, block, doesn't get it out of bounds, and it'll go back to the Great play by Scott, who threw the ball as it was bouncing out of bounds off a of Beale City man, and then it went out of bounds, so it's Northport's ball. For all this running up and down, for all the quality that uh, Beale City plays to be pairing with, and they are, they're only ahead by three points. Sanders Scott between two players and the foul out front on Todd Schaefer. Just the fourth team foul. Let's watch the play again by Sanders Scott. Quickly we'll go back now and watch the effort by Scott to save the ball for his team. Ball heading out of bounds, he bounces it right off the back of Jason Corson. Heads up play by Scott, allows the Wildcats a chance to cut into this deficit. Not inbounds. Stowe at the top, Jason Stowe. Lobs inside, out of bounds. It'll go back to Beale City. That was correct call, I think it kicked off of uh, Scott's fingers. Five turnovers now for Northport. See if Beale can build, build their biggest lead. Fox launches, hey. it. Almost a three, but it'll settle for two. And with two and a half to go in the first quarter, Beale City with a five point lead. Ahead to Scott, behind the back, hangs and scores. That's a nice looking shot. You can see how he's tallied 1,500 points. Back the other way, jumping through, doesn't go, and a foul on the rebound. On Corson. First foul on Corson. Watch 40, Corson here, commit the foul. I thought he made a good effort, but they must have got him with it. It's on the rebound. Scott! That's a tough position for him. I mean, he was on his back with his body, but the guy really jumped on those backwards, too. Fourth team foul. Schaefer for three, doesn't get it. Rebound, Scott. Ahead to Thomas, one on two. Three. It doesn't matter. Thomas averaging 17 points. Those are his first points today. Never met a basket he didn't want to shoot at. Fox from the top. <laughs> Rebound Schaefer inside. Nice move. Oh, he didn't get the roll. But Tim Block has it blocked. And Fox still doesn't get it. Dave Sheehan does. Back to the three-point lead. Sanders Scott from 16. Yes. Scott with six, 120 to go first quarter. He is warming up to the uh, moment. Very exciting game so far. Dan Pung on the baseline. Tough shot. Good position by Scott and he wants to run. Got it. Ahead to Daniel Stowe. Oh, Stowe with six. <laughs> Northport on top and the Wildcat fans on their feet. Matt Fox from 10 doesn't get the roll. And a foul out front, no traveling call. Jason Corson went after the ball and kind of got it caught on his hip. Northport fans not agreeing with the call. I tell you something right now, our officials have really done a great job staying up with this game. Oh, I'll tell yes. This is one tough game to officiate. No doubt about it. Tim Block, turnaround pop, doesn't go. Tipped up and in by Schaefer. Beale City back on top by a point with 30 seconds to go in a quarter. Sanders Scott doesn't get it. And a foul over the back on Jason Corson. 
will go the other way and shoot a one and one. 21-20, Beal City over Northport. Here's the shot, and you'll see Corson come in and go right over the back, and the foul right there. 20 seconds to go in the first period. Second foul on Corson, back the other way. Todd Schaefer will shoot the one and one for Beal City. Put block at the line instead of Schaefer. About 65% from the line is blocked. Big quarter for Tim offensively. He's got seven already. Block second free throw. Gives Beale City a three-point lead with 20 seconds to go in the quarter. That's enough time for five or six points. Oh, they're going to slow it down. Fred Thomas is going to slow it down. They'll sort of slow it down. So much for slowing it down. <laughs> Seven seconds to go. Matt Fox, he'll launch for three. Doesn't get it, got it for the board. It won't count with the score. Beale City 23, Northport 22 from Chrysler Arena in Ann Arbor. This is the Michigan High School Sports Network. After one very exciting quarter, Beale City with a one-point lead over Northport, 23-22 for staff stats, Ed. Rebounds, Beale City 10, Northport 10. Turnovers, Beale City 2, Northport 6. The score, Beale City 23, Northport 22. Whoops. Change that, Tim Block starts out the second quarter the way we played that whole first quarter. Block has 10 now, he's in double figures. Here's Sanders Scott, 34. Pulls up, wanted to take it. Thomas lobs inside to Corson, lost it. Good effort over there by Matt Fox, but he stepped on the sideline trying to save it. We appreciate the folks that have joined us here on the Michigan High School Sports Network. Even our good friends out in Phoenix, Arizona. There you go. Dimension Cable. I need a Phoenix Cardinals cap. Sanders Scott inside, jumps from 10. Oh, he knows how to shoot it. He has eight on the ball game. Wasn't getting his shots in the first few minutes, but he's getting them now. A little while to get to the, get accustomed to the pace. Schaefer for three, way off the mark. Air ball. And the rebound pulled down by Northport. Nathan Kulchik in the lineup, he got the board that time for the Cats. Steal out front. Dan Pong. Made the steal. Jump ball, possession goes to Northport. Again, you can hear the Beale City fans disagreeing with that from that time. Hey. Sanders Scott, Three. his first three-point effort is good. <laughs> <laughs> Again, folks, he's just a junior. He's got 11 already. Blocks jumper doesn't go, battle for the board. Fox has it blocked. Schaefer on the right side. Scott, good rebound. Sanders Scott now with six boards to lead all rebounders. He's gonna pull up from there. Missed. Good rebound that time by Beale City's Dan Pung. Schaefer shot inside, drops. Oh, Real City has tied it up again. Corson, this is on the left side, the bank doesn't go. Schaefer gives to Pong, and he has stripped away. Nice play defensively by Fred Thomas. It's Nathan Kalchuk who missed the shot down to the other end, number 44 in the ball game for Northport. Fox for three. Good battling for the board. Thomas to Scott. And he drew the foul. Well, you just don't take your eyes off Sanders no. Scott once he's no. got the ball. You give him an inch, he'll shoot it. One and one.
27-27 deals. There's good looking Sam Scott. Junior, six foot, gets the shooter's bounce. That foul was on Tim Block, his first. I've always felt, Ed, that the guys that are as good as Sanders Scott, they shouldn't get those rolls. I mean, they get enough on their own. That's not the way it works, though, is it? No, it isn't. That's the reason they get those rolls. Right. He now has seven in the quarter, 13 in the game. Right. North Court on top by a bucket. Dan Pung inside, no whistle till after the shot, I believe. It's going to be on Jason Corson, and that'll be his third. Watch 40, Jason Corson pick up what I believe is his third foul. He'll try to block it from behind. You'll watch him with number 40 in dark blue sneak from behind right there. Got him a little bit with the body too. Third foul, he'll come out of the ball game. Joshua Race in replacing uh, Corson. And Kung misses the first free throw. Second one. And Northport comes up with a one point lead. Kolchik, Thomas from the top, way short. Out of bounds, it'll go back to the Aggies. Tipped out of bounds there by Daniel Stowe. Here comes Beal. Todd Schaefer. Three-pointer by Gottlieber. Bingo. Second of the ball again for Gottlieber, who sat out a while because of foul trouble. Daniel Stowe the other way. Brings it back out to Thomas. Pass inside, out of bounds. No court will keep it. 4.59 to go in the first half. Sanders Scott will trigger. They get back to Scott. Well, he wants it. Doesn't get that one, though. Schaefer gets the board. Got Lieber. He's hit two out there. Not this one. Rebound run down by Pung. Was he affected by that miss? I don't yes, think so. Readjusted his aim. And a foul defensively on Fox. Get a second foul on Matt Fox will go the other way. Jason Gottlieber with three three-pointers oh, already. And the leading three-pointer shooter in the tournament counting the quarterfinals and semis to this point. He had five last night. In Beale City's 60 to 56 victory over Martin in the semifinals. Red Thomas at the line for the one and one. Shooting 75% from there, but doesn't get this one. Good rebound inside by Daniel Stowe. Thomas gets another chance. Oh, he didn't get the roll on that one. This guy will. You better believe it. Oh, he doesn't oh, get the roll either, and Schaefer with the board. Schaefer pushes it up for the Aggies. Back to Schaefer for the five-footer, count it. Watch Schaefer penetrating now. It's in the lane, dishes off. He'll get the ball back, and he'll penetrate again, go up for the shot, get whacked as he goes up and makes it. Kolchik commits the foul for Northport at the line. Schaefer has six points tonight. Can't complete the three-point play. Kolchik with the rebound for Northport. The lead now is at seven, which is as large as it has been all night long, but it might be down to four here. Scott's Probably shot is short. Rebound Schaefer. Ahead of the pack to Pong. One-on-one. -on -one. Pong lays it in. Nice basket. Some non-cerebral fan threw something onto the floor. That's so dangerous. That was a paper airplane. Timeout on the floor. 3.53 to go in the first half. Beale City leads Northport 38 to 29.
We've got 3.53 to go in the first half. The Class D State Championship game live from Chrysler Arena on the Michigan High School Sports Network. Northport brings the ball up, trailing by nine. And a steal by Beale City. That's tough, too. When you take a timeout, you try and set up a play that you know you're going to get at least a great shot at, and then you throw it away and uh, makes all that effort wasted. Got Lieber, his first two-point field goal after three triples. He has 11. The lead is 11. Inside, Daniel Stowe. Nice move, but he couldn't get it to drop. Sanders Scott is the only player to score for Northport in this period. Dan Pong has it blocked out of bounds by Sanders Scott. Beale City will keep it. Jason Stowe checks back in for Northport. Nathan Kolchak to the bench. Beale City is blazing in this period, I'll tell you. Got leader. Inside from 17. Back the other way, Fred Thomas, some fancy dribbling, and he'll launch it. Sanders Scott battles for the board. Look at the left hand. Scott with 18, 12 in the period. Lob to Schaefer. Nice play, a little bit off, and Sanders Scott the other way. Calls out a play, wants them to clear out for him. Thomas from 17 this time. Ugh. Didn't get the roll. Rebound for Jason Gottlieber ahead to Fox. Nice dish to Schaefer. He got the roll. Schaefer with eight. It's an 11 point lead again for Beale City. Scott from 18. Oh, finish. Well, Sander Scott is keeping Northport within shouting distance, but the, he's the only Wildcat to score in the second quarter. That's exactly right. Fox hits for three. But Sander can't do it alone. Not against Beale City. The Aggies have got a bunch of guys that can score. Fox, great hustle, stepped on the sideline and went right into press row there. Gets a well-deserved hand from his fans for his effort. We've got 1.37 to go in the first half. Peel City leads Northport by 11. Not sure what the discussion about here. Not either. I see what, I know what that's all about. Doing a fair amount of radio work in, in my time, Ed. The guy comes into the press row, you know he's gonna hit the radio table and he's gonna mess up all the wires. Oh, oh nice. beautiful feed to Dan Stowe. Brett Thomas whipped it across to Stowe. He becomes the first player other than Scott to score in this period for Northport. Beale City with a 10 point lead. Fox took steps. He did. 1-11 to go. Northport brings it up, 10 point deficit. Sanders Scott. Wants him to clear out again. He'll go to the other side now and get a return pass, and he'll fire from three. Boom! Boom! Well, I've got him for 15 this period. I've got him for 14. All right, we're close. In any case, he's got at least 20, we know that. 14 is right because the team scored 16. There's a basket to, at the other end. Tim Block. Tim Block. And lead back up to nine. Sander Scott says, do you want to play for one? Well, they didn't play for one that time. Good position inside. Scott doesn't go in a foul. Scott. It's going to be on Sander Scott. Reached in.
checking in for Beale City, number 40, Dave Sheehan again. And Jason Gottlieber gets a round of applause as he heads to the Aggie bench. Gottlieber has three threes and a two today for 11 points. One away from the full house. That's right. Free throw doesn't go, rebound Scott. 20 seconds to go, and now the Wildcats will try to play for the final shot. Ball slapped away, and the call over back to say it wasn't touched. Boy, but regardless of whether it was touched or not, Dan Pung continues to just do a really fine job when he's out on Scott. Fox comes out for Beale City. Mike Zion is in for the final 10 seconds. Schaefer says, I want it. Pass inside, block, has it blocked. Scott will throw it the length of the court. It won't get there, not a bad effort, Not though. a bad effort. We played one half of basketball in the Class D State Championship game at Chrysler Arena, and Beale City leads Northport 47 to 38. Stay with us. Ed Phelps and Rick Berkey back at halftime of the Class D State Championship game between the Beale City Aggies and uh, the Northport Wildcats and the balloon settles over the uh, center of the court here at uh, Chrysler Arena. And it is at the halftime, Beale City leading 47 to 38 in a wild offensive affair. Sanders got 20 points for Northport to keep the Wildcats in the game, but a good effort all around. Tim Block with 12 and Jason Gottlieber with 11. Matt Fox with nine and Schaefer with eight for Beale City. Rick? Ed, the boys' basketball finals have a long and proud heritage here in Michigan. We thought it might be fun this year to look back 20 years ago at some vintage footage of the finals. Join us now for our musical venture back to the 1968 boys' state finals and someone who lived through it. Doing fine. Up here on 1968 was the time of uh, Martin Luther King's assassination. Music was from Motown was very popular. Uh, groups like the Temptations, Supremes, the Beatles uh, emerged during this er era. Uh, also, uh, television shows such as Batman came out. My little sister really enjoyed that then. And this kind of, this was a time where uh, I played a lot of basketball. I asked myself, did we really do this? You know, did we really come down here and win the state championship? You know, and it never set in for it. It took a long time to set in, you know. So it was it was like a dream, really. That was Ernie Johnson, a member of the Grand Rapids Ottawa Hills Class A state champion in 1968, now a teacher and coach in the Grand Rapids public school system. We're at the half of the Class D state title. Beale City leads Northport 47 to 38. We'll come back with an interview with Executive Director of the MHSAA, Jack Roberts, in just a moment. Point of the Class D state uh, championship game, Beale City ahead of Northport 47 to 38. This is a big day for high school athletics in Michigan. And Jack Roberts is now completing his second year as Executive Director of the Michigan High School Athletic Association. Rick Berkey is standing by live right now with Mr. Roberts. Rick. 
Thank you, Ed. And Jack joins me right now. And Jack, in your second year as executive director of the MHSAA, let's talk a little bit about the difference uh, from your first year to your second year in your position. Well, I think the first year there was a lot of listening and a lot of planning. And now this second year, a lot of doing and a lot of implementing of those plans. And the first year had some things that uh, excited us. We have cooperative programs for very small schools where they can combine uh, to form one team for the very small schools. We've done some things with our eligibility rules to allow overage eighth graders to participate in the nine to 12 grade program. We've done a great deal of planning with our athletic officials and have some great plans for recruiting more officials, training them better, and evaluating them more thoroughly. In your doing, what's been the toughest? I think that we are now struggling with one of the toughest topics that the association's ever gonna deal with, and that's out of season competition particularly summertime competition. So for the last six months, we have been processing a dialogue, people talking about it throughout our association, athletic directors, coaches, principals, superintendents, school board members, to try to come to grips with some proposals to uh, limit competition in the summer. We're finding that we may not need new limitations, and that in fact, we have plenty of limitations right now that just need to be more clearly communicated and completely enforced. What are your feelings so far about the state basketball championships today? Oh, they've been wonderful. The Class B game was marvelous. The crowd was marvelous. Sportsmanship's been great. And this game that we've just been watching is the most frantic pace of anything I've ever seen. And again, the sportsmanship is terrific. The young men from the Northland certainly doing a great job. Uh, Jack, we appreciate you joining us here at Courtside. And best of luck uh, in many years to come at the MHSAA. Thank you, Rick. And thank you for being with us. Let's go back now to Ed Phelps at Courtside. Thank you very much, Rick Berkey. The ice went out early this year up in Northport and Leno in the Leewanaw Peninsula because that basketball team, the Wildcats, is red hot. And they are red hot right now ahead of losing, however, to Beale City 47 to 38 at the half of the Class D State Championship game. We'll be back on the Michigan High School Sports Network. Back once again at courtside, Chrysler Arena. Beale City leads Northport 47 to 38 after a very, very exciting and fast-paced action. Ed, you mentioned the leading scorers in the game. Tim Block with 12, Jason Gottlieber 11 for Beale City. On the other side, Sander Scott with 20 points leading all scores. Eight points for Daniel Stowe. Interesting note here, let's go to the team stats, but an interesting note, they forgot to bring the balls out for the Northport team and they could not practice shooting before the start of the second half. They have had no practice. Boy, that uh, could be a tactical mistake. Well, Let's here. check out the team stats. There though. you go. You see Northport uh, and Beale City shooting uh, fairly the same. 44 to 41. Uh, free throws, four out of five for Northport, five out of eight for Beale. Rebounds, 25 apiece. Turnovers, however, there's a big factor. Northport, 10, Beale City, four. Three point plays, Northport, two out of seven. Both those Sanders Scott, four out of 10 for Beale City. That's not bad shooting. But by the end of the game, my guess is Northport will catch them in attempts. Oh, from yes. the three-point land. <laughs> I think so, too. And whether or not they'll catch him in the makes, I don't know, but they will get as many shots off from three-point. Two other champions crowned earlier today. South Christian of Grand Rapids in Class B this morning, and Detroit Cooley over Flint Northwestern in Class A this afternoon. Beal we'll City start in right possession. Up. Got Lieber. Ah, he's a little off. And Sanders Scott with the board. Remember, Northport did not have any practice after their halftime break because they forgot to bring the balls out. Daniel Stowe doesn't get the one to go. Matt Fox zips it inside. Well, not that the way they planned it, but Tim Block takes the deflection and scores. Block's having a nice game. That's 14 for him. Sanders Scott wants it, gets it. Sanders Scott, you see, doesn't need to practice. It's his third three-pointer of the ball game. 23, if he gets 37 tonight, he's at the 1600 point mark. Boy, he's got a nice looking shot too, doesn't he, Rick? He does indeed. The fundamentals are very strong there. He goes straight up, excellent release. Gottlieber launches again. That was a two pointer. Gottlieber with 13. But now he has a three house, three threes and two twos. Scott behind the backboard. Oh. Scott with 25. <laughs> it makes it look easy, too. That's an easy 25 he's got. Well, I tell you, I don't think that it's too early to start looking ahead at some of the scoring records in the state championship game. No, I don't think it is either. 
Fox inside to Schaefer. Nice, nice dish game. to Gottlieber. Uh, draw the defense to you and make the pass. Todd Schaefer, a fine feed over there. His second assist of the game. Collision inside. Offense. And this is going to be the fourth foul, I believe, against Jason Corsan. It is. And he'll have to go to the bench. Nathan Kalchik will replace him for the Wildcats. By the way, that scoring record, uh, 47 in the championship game by someone very familiar to high school basketball fans through the years. It's right there in front of you. The judge. Matt Fox in the corner. Out on the top, Dan Pung. Slapped away and a travel. 6.02 to go in the third quarter. Beale City has a 10 point lead over Northport. Sanders Scott, now they'll bring it around to him on the other side. Well, they can't get it because Pung's good defense. Oh, fine. Jason stole from Fred Thomas. Thomas' fifth assist of the game. Lead Gotten. is only eight. And a steal outside, but it's stolen back. And a turnover the other way. Lead is eight. Northport is within striking distance easily. Three-point shot makes that a real strong possibility. Kalchik kicks it out. Jumper doesn't go. Daniel Stowe battles for it, but it's pulled down by Tim Block of Beale City. Just great end-to-end -end action here. Fox launches way Good short. Rebound. Good rebound there by Pong out to Fox again. Got Lieber got a half step. Pong another rebound. Got Lieber for three. <laughs> and Pong yet another rebound. Pong with three rebounds on this possession. Block inside, and Pong nearly stole it. Well, no points there, but you've got to be impressed with the play of Dan Pung. Sanders Scott hasn't shot in a while. That'll change. Doesn't get the roll. Good rebound, Fox. He lost it, but Pung there again. Gottlieber from the corner. Battered around. And Thomas ahead of the pack for the land. Thomas with six. The lead is North down North six. Back within six. Schaefer, nice fake, and he'll take a 15 footer. Made the defensive man commit and had the easy basket. We've got the we push pushing inside, oh, yeah. yeah, from behind. I believe on Tim Block. Block or Pung, one of the two. It is Block, yep. his second. Common foul, Northport will inbound with 3.54 to go, third quarter. The scoring's dropped off a little bit here, Ed, but certainly not the pace at all. I know, they're just getting cranked up. Remember, Northport didn't have any shit practice after the break. Scott, and a foul inside on Kalchik. Kalchik thought he had good, uh, Kalchik thought he had good position. Well, watch, it starts here. Really, Scott forced this one. Yes. Thought he had good position to get the rebound, but the ball bounced away from him and he just reached in and was trapped with a foul. It is blocked, yep. his second. Common foul, Northport will inbound with 3.54 to go, third quarter. The scoring's dropped off a little bit here, Ed, but certainly not the pace at all. I know, they're just getting cranked up. Remember, Northport didn't have any shit practice after the break. Scott, and a foul inside on Kalchik. 
Kolchak thought he had good. Uh, Kolchak thought he had good position. Well, watch it starts here. Really, Scott forced this one. Yes. Thought he had good position to get the rebound, but the ball bounced away from him, and he just reached in and was trapped with a foul. Just the second team foul. And Beale City brings it up, still holding that eight-point advantage. Oh, a near steal off front. It goes out of bounds. Our official. Look at Brett Thomas. He, right. looks, he clears the official. Hey, that should have been my ball. A lot of fans forget that the officials are part of the playing field. Fox out on the top. And this will be a foul inside on Jason Stowe, his third, I believe. Good look at Fred Thomas. Had a great uh, game last night at the semifinals of the Northport victory at 27 points to that one. Fox to Schaefer, and he'll take the three. Schaefer, five in the quarter, 13 in the game. The lead is 12 for Beale City. Nice give and go inside to Jason Stone. Classic basketball there. Sixth assist of the game for Fred Thomas. Fox on the baseline. Here comes Sander Scott. He's tough with the ball. Here's he up. Gets that ball up at the top of his jump and then just rests it until he gets his body perfectly balanced and then launches it. 27 for Scott. But Beale City with the ball and a seven point lead. Pung gives to Gottlieber from the corner. Good rebound, Kalchik. Out of bounds, and it'll go back to Beale City. Did you see those hands, sir? Great grab over here by Ed Phelps. <laughs> Craig Johnson and I, of course, were under the table. Had no choice. Northport needs to make something happen on defense now. They've been hanging around this five, this six, seven, eight, nine point margin. Yeah, they got a little break. Now they get the ball. 2.12 to go, third quarter. Sanders Scott will bring it up. Calls out play number five. Let's see if he runs it. Oh, he pulls it up. Boom. Five, that is three. It's also point number 30. And a steal. He's a cover. They have made something happen. They're back within three. 145 to go. Back within two. Two brings it back to Northport. The Wildcat fans celebrating as is the bench. Time out by Beale City. 1.42 to go in the third quarter. Beale City still on top, but Northport back within a couple. Well, back here, 1.42 to go, third quarter. Beale City leads Northport by two. And the Wildcats of Northport have battled back. They trailed by eight just about 45 seconds ago, but led by Sanders Scott and Fred Thomas. And this is Thomas from the top. Follows his own shot. Gets it inside to Kolchik, who turns it up. Kolchik with his first basket of the game, and Northport, after having trailed since the first quarter, is now ahead. It gets position, a turnover. Yeah, third straight turnover. The seventh of this quarter, Ed. They call their play, put their fingers together. Why do you feel like it's gonna end up in Scott's hands? <laughs> oh, a nice steal by Schaefer, and Scott fouls him. Just the second foul on Scott. Still a common foul, I have two, let's check it, it might be three. His second. Fourth team foul, so from here on in, after they inbound the ball, Beale City will be shooting. And Schaefer yeah, fouled out front, and he'll go to the line. 
Jason Stowe, and I have four on Stowe. He wanted the, he wanted the uh, pushing foul on the offense there. And that is four. So Northport coach Gordy Wick. Uh, He's gonna go to Joshua Reese here. You know, it's a, uh, it may seem automatic here, but the combination that Northport's got going right now, you're almost tempted to leave him in, even yes. though he's got four. Schaefer hits. Puts his team back out on top by a point. 109 to go. Big hand from Jason Snow as he comes out on the Northport side. Schaefer with uh, six in the quarter, 14 for the game. Good looking young man. Good shot of him here, too. Lou McPherson, our cameraman, giving it to you up close. Doesn't go. Scott with the board. Scott inside oh. to the hole. 32. 60 59. Back the other way. Schaefer gives it side to Scott. Misses. Thomas. Knocked out of bounds. Gonna go the other way with 46 seconds to go. Bill City not down by one. Thomas didn't look. He had Sanders stop trailing, and Sanders was at about 12 feet, and that's a layup for him almost. Todd Schaefer brings it up. Thought about the three. Instead goes to the hole and draws a foul. Who's he gonna call it against? Scott was there. Block was there. It's one of the two. I think the way. The way Scott is pleading his case, it might be him. It is. It is on Scott, his third. They're on such a roll, they being Northport, that they feel like everything can go their way and it's just one of those situations where you just reach a little bit too far. Schaefer, you see, has 14. He'll get two here from the line. He missed three of his first four from the line tonight before hitting that one. Scott Here with comes the rebound. Sanders Scott with the ball. All the way in. <laughs> 14 in the quarter, 34 in the game. Dan Pong gives to block. Out of bounds. Northport gets it back with 19 seconds to go. The Wildcats with the ball and a two-point lead. Northport has really picked up the tempo. What a terrific basketball game here on the Michigan High School Sports Network. Here comes Scott. 11 seconds. The Wildcats want to play for one. And it's going to be Scott. Nope. Jumper from the out, oh. by Stowe! And that ends the third quarter with a score. Northport 64, Beale City 60, from Chrysler Arena in Ann Arbor. This is the Michigan High School Sports Network. After a big quarter, the uh, score, Northport has 64 over Beale City 60. They have a four point lead. Northport doubled Beale City, 26-13 in that quarter, Ed Phelps. And Sander Scott has your basic 34-point night so far. 14 for the quarter. Daniel Stowe hit that last bucket to end the half, follows his own shot the first of the quarter. It's now a six-point lead for Northport. Not Left away. away and stolen by Thomas. Oh, I like the way this young man plays the game. Plays hard, doesn't he? Good pass. Beautiful feed to Cole to count out of He did. He did. Yep. Too bad. It was a nice move, and Thomas with a spectacular pass across his body. And you see that his teammate from messing it up. He is feisty. Peel City now. They'll have their character tested, trailing by six. Schaefer, now Fox looking inside. Block inside, slapped away. And a carrier travel, that's a travel. Yeah. 
Thomas is so intense out there, you almost have to get him just to calm down just a shade because intensity can uh, cause him to lose, lose a ball or two. Schaefer, one-on-one -on -one block yeah. by Sanders Scott. Thomas lobs inside. Coming up with the loose ball was Joshua Race. A place for the uh, faint of heart in there. Now watch here, he got a break here, did Northport. Thomas, he wants to throw the ball inside. His man went the other way, so he fired it over here. Race grabbed it. He got bumped twice. But regardless of what Fred Thomas will tell us in the post game, that pass was not intended for Joshua Race. But Race saved the day there. And he'll get two. Get the roll. Grace does not have a point on the night. Doesn't get the roll. Battle inside. Ball inside. Might be on Gottlieber. It's definitely on Northport. Or Beale City, rather. It's on Gottlieber. I have him for three. Right. He's fourth. That is the fourth. He picked up the two there in a hurry. Almost got a T, too. The line, Daniel Stowe, has not been there tonight. He has 12 points. <laughs> Fred Thomas over there for Northport, revving up the crowd. He's an entertainer. There's 35 boys in the Northport High School. That's all there are there. Some confusion now over yeah. at the bench. It was not a it shooting foul. not a shooting foul, so that is a correctable Trauma. error. Right, that is. There's no clock run, so they mean they can take the free throw away. Those free throw, that free throw never existed, technically. Try telling that to Daniel Stowe, though. Right. Thomas. Right side slapped away. Schaefer brings it up for the Aggies. Fox for three. Big rebound by Kalchik. Sanders Scott hasn't shot yet in this quarter. Good decision there. Yep. Thomas for three. And the rebound by Gottlieber. He's playing with four fouls, by the way. We've got 6.05 to go in the fourth quarter. Beal City with the ball, trailing by a half dozen. This could cut it in half. It doesn't, though. Good battle for the board by Pung. He keeps it alive. There's Gottlieber. And a foul away from the ball. It's going to be on Northport. Looks to me like it's number 44, Nathan uh, Kalchik. Either him or Daniel Stowe. It's on Stowe, just his first. Tim Block will go to the line for the one and one for Beale City. Block with 14 points on the night. First one, he's three out of four from the line tonight, sitting about 63% on the season. Sanders Scott, his key offensive weapon, but he's got a six point lead with 5.52 to go. I think what you do is you take him out for a minute or two, see if the rest of you guys can have a Thus far, no move from the bench. Hung hits the first free throw, he'll get a second. 
He has six points on the night. This game, though, is rebounding and defense, and he's done a whale of a job. Now it's a two point lead. Sanders Scott says, I'll take it. Oh, he took steps. I tell you, Sanders Scott may not be happy with that call, but he, he was, was very close to his fifth foul. There. Very close. He's going to come out. Well, let's mark it down, Ed. 5.43 to go in the game. It's 66-64 when Scott comes out. His team leads by two as Beale City brings it up. And he's replaced by Jason Stowe, who has four fouls. Well, the coach had to do that. I agree. Gordy Wicks had to do that. I agree. Schaefer, Gottlieber for three! Good rebound inside by Corson. Now if Northport knew how to slow it down. It would Thomas be smart to do that and kill some time off that clock, take some time off the clock. Pump the other way. Gottlieber holds up for Fox. Schaefer on the baseline, falls from 10 and nails it. Five ball game. 5.05 to go in the fourth. Deadlocked at 66. Thomas will carry the burden now for Northport and a whistle away from the ball. It'll be a foul on Beale City. Could be on Tim Block, clearing out underneath. It's 32, Tim, right, right. there. Up on Tim Block, third person, fourth team foul. We'll go to the line. No, he won't. The same bomb it. Excuse me. Just the fourth foul. Fred Thomas looks for the screen. Shows the patience. It inside. Though. And there's the foul on Gottlieber. He's gone. If it's on 20, he's looking around saying, oh, no, no, not me, please. But it is. It is. We haven't gotten the official signal yet. And he is now. Gottlieber is fouled out. With 4.46 to go in the game, he leaves with 17 points. He will be replaced by Dave Sheehan in the ball game for Gottlieber. <laughs> 17, did you have him with? 17. Yep. 66-66, 4.46 to go. Anybody who's ever followed my broadcast knows that that is definitely the unofficial scoring protocol. Jason Stowe gets a chance to put his team back ahead. Jason two for two from the line so far this evening. Ooh, Rat is out. And Beale City now with the ball and a chance to take a lead. Dan Pung got a screen inside and a foul out front on Thomas. And Pung will go to the line for the one and one. Thomas thought he had a good chance for a reach in and a knockaway, but he just got a little of the wrist. Well, I'm telling you, I'm watching Sanders Scott over on the Northport bench. He is in absolute agony. He just wants to get in so badly, and he's kind of throwing some gentle hints over at Coach Gordy Wick about putting him back in there. Gordy's telling him, I've got to have you at the end, Sander. Right now, though, Dan Pung with six points, a very important one and one. Team on top by one. Four and a half to go in the fourth. Guess what? Scott talked him into it. <laughs> Here he comes. And he's got back into the ball game. He was out less than a minute. Well, a little over a minute. Minute seven seconds. Well, the coach, uh, Gordy Wick, just uh, rolled the dice. Said, let's go with it. What do they say? Yeah. Danced with the one that brung you to the dance. Goes over and talks to one of the officials. Because I'm not Sanders Scott, really, right? Here he comes up, one on two, but it doesn't matter. Count it. Oh, that was very close to offensive. 
Let's but watch. the angle that the official had showed the defensive block. Here it is. Scott with the move to the basket and steps into it. Yes, good call. You see, Tim Blocks is moving, yep. as is Matt Fox. They were both moving. I don't know who they gave it to. I think they gave it to Fox, his third. Scott's first points of the fourth quarter. He now has 36. Over 37. 1,600 now for his career. He had 1,563 coming into the game. Northport with a one-point lead. Shows the press and then drops back. Fox and Schaefer out front. Fred Thomas a near steal. Schaefer comes up five on four now. Thomas is, is Fred Thomas injured? We're going to call a foul on Beale City's Tim Block, I believe. Away from the ball. Tim's not sure what the call is all about. And that's four on block. We'll go the other way and shoot the one and one. And I think it's Sandra Scott who's going to do the shooting. Yeah, uh, Fred Thomas got a little cramp in his foot when he went down here just a moment ago. He's over the sideline now, just stretching, trying to get that foot back in shape. Well, He's in addition tough. to everything else, Sanders Scott is a 90% free throw shooter. <laughs> in the regular season, he was 90 for 99. He's three for three and make it four for four today. He's uh, six feet tall, a junior. Well, if he grew another two or three inches, wouldn't he do something to be heard? He just might. I know it. Pressure might, now. He might be back to Chrysler Arena also. Pass ahead. This is Punk. Oh, jumper by Fox. Doesn't go. Gives to Punk on the baseline. Nice move, Punk, but the shot won't drop. Steal out front by the Aggies. Dave Sheehan in the lineup with a big steal that time. Schaefer launches. That's great. Great show. But he runs it down. Good hustle by Schaefer. And a steal in the inside. Well, I tell you, Scott has a chance here to do something. We've got a whistle inside and a foul on Sheehan. The all time record for the state championship game is 47 points, but the Class D championship record is 40. And Here's the a replay underneath. You'll see the foul, and going to the line will be Daniel Stowe, but the Class D final record is 40 points by Bob Gale of Ewan Trout Creek back in 1966. Against Colbert. And right now, Sanders Scott has 39, but more importantly right now, Daniel Stowe hits a very big free throw. Puts his team on top by four with three and a half to go. Right, remember they took one away from him. Right. They said they weren't in the bonus, so he took advantage there. Pressure now, Northport. Here comes Schaefer. Pushing it up. Schaefer will pop and hit. He won't quit firing. His bullets aren't gone. He's got 19. Scott double team. Gets it ahead to Stowe. Jason Stowe, bump, no call. Sander Scott wants a screen. Out front to Thomas. Thomas lobs inside. Left hand up, doesn't go. Battle for the word. Thomas got it. Oh. Good hustle by the little guy. Four point, making a That's five foul point. on Sanders Scott. And he's gone. He's gone. That was a foul and he ran right into it. Oh, uh, Sanders Scott is going to come up one point short of the Class D scoring record, regardless of what happens the rest of the way. But what an ovation he'll get, leaving with 39 points. 39 points, he just overextended himself a little bit too much trying to chase down that ball, but he leads his team with a five point lead and 252 to go, 75-70. Well, here's one of those situations with 252 to go. The final 250 will seem like it'll take forever for Northport, for Beale City, it'll seem like it'll go by in a flash. At the line, Dan Pung for the one-on-one. One. He's three out of six so far. Coach Tom Lavoie of Beale City wants a timeout after his, uh, if, his, uh, if Pung makes the second free throw. 
least that's what the indication was to me. Well, oh, good, but a rebound by Sheehan. He lost it and brought it back out. Sheehan's come up with a couple big yes, plays. Yes, he's been a factor. Move inside by Block. And a foul by Block. Or Sheehan, rather. Watch the Here's battle. The battle. Here. Underneath. And Sheehan reaches in and uh, pays the price. Well, George Raveling of USC wrote a book called War on the Boards. I think that that little flurry back there underneath the basket certainly made that title appropriate. Dan Stowe. Two for two so far from the strike. This is rebound. Big oh. rebound, Corson, and he's fouled. He is fouled. That'll be on Sheehan also. Well, she is going to get his name in the book. Corson at the line for the one and one. Two gentlemen, two shots. Not a shot so far tonight. 2.39 to go, fourth quarter. Corson gets two, hits the first. Puts his team on top by five. He has five on the night. So the best two long-range bombers in this ball game are both out on fouls. Jason Gottlieber of Beale City and Sanders Scott of Northport. Second one rattles out. Rebound pulled down by Fox. Five-point lead, two and a half minutes to go, Rick. Fox tries the triple. Big <laughs> Timeout on the floor with 2.24 to go in the fourth. Northport leads Real City 76 74. Here we go, final 224. At least we think. Let's not discount overtime possibilities here. Northport with the basketball holding a two point lead over the Beale City Aggies in what has been a, just an absolutely sensational Class D state championship game. It's been a good one, hasn't it? That it has. Oh, a steal by Pong. And now Beale City with a chance to tie it up or even possibly take a lead with a three-pointer. Schaefer tries to take that lead. Good Big rebound. rebound that time. Joshua Race with the board. Stowe kicks it out. Thomas. Corson. Corson on the baseline. And I think he's fouled before the shot. By Sheehan. He's third real quick. You see, the problem that Northport faces, Rick, is Beale City lost Jason Gottlieb, their best shooter. Northport lost Sanders Scott, who's their best shooter, but he's also their best basketball player. And consequently, they lost a little bit of control on the floor. But I think that's a, that might be a little bit tough for them to overcome, but they do have the one-point advantage. Corson at the line, doesn't get it. Big rebound inside, that's a guard. Boy, Joshua Reyes got another big rebound and kept it alive, and Northport will keep it. 1.45 to go. Northport could play for the good shot, show some patience. It would help their cause tremendously. Thomas. That is not the good shot. Well, you knows. can see, though, they're not used to playing this no, kind of game. No, they're not. Yes, you're absolutely correct. Thomas. Out on the top. Race back out to Jason Stowe. And yeah. a timeout call with 1.23 to go in the game. We'll keep it right here and analyze this, but we mentioned, Ed, that you know, when you play that kind of basketball, it, it's so opposed to, to what you're used to doing when you're used to race horse basketball. It's like being a drag strip racer and all of a sudden you got to run in a, uh, I don't know, a 5,000 mile race and you got to play it totally differently. And these guys are used to racing up and down the floor, making two passes at the most and throwing it at the hole. And uh, they've got to really temper, control themselves now. Well, we talked about uh, Sanders Scott being a junior, but 
Northport with starting three juniors and one of their top subs off the bench with as a junior, including Sanders Scott coming back there. Boy, they could make a nice tournament run again next year. Yeah, but you know how uh, tough that tournament road is, and so many little things get in your way, and all of a sudden people who aren't supposed to win do win. And uh, Dundee upsetting uh, DeForest down to the Detroit area. That was a major shock, and then Dundee gets knocked, get knocked off the next game. That's the beauty of the state oh, tournament yeah. here. Right. We have two champions already crowned today. Class B, Grand Rapids South Christian this morning beat Bishop Borges 69-66 and an absolutely great basketball game. And this afternoon, Detroit Cooley defended its title in Class A, defeating Flint Northwest in 66-55. And right now, Northport sitting on a two-point lead over Beale City with 1.23 to go in the final period, 76-74. Thomas on the left side to Stowe. Had Thomas for the second underneath. Thomas lost it, but got it back. He's tough. Near steal by Pung. Jason Stowe to Thomas. That's right, don't shoot it. About a minute. Thomas is fouled out front. Schaefer or Fox. I thought it might be blocked, but let's see. Nope. Schaefer. First foul on Todd Schaefer. At the line for the 101, Fred Thomas. He's 0 for 1 so far tonight from the charity strike. 75% free throw shooter on the year. He is kind of the inspirational leader of this team. He puts his team on top by three with 103 to go in the fourth quarter. The vital point. Especially against a team that can shoot triples. He has 12 for the game. Northport brings it back. Now, uh, Beale City has a few more weapons off, uh, offensively than Northport does. Let's see what they do. Schaefer fakes, almost draws the foul. Pung all the way inside, scoops it oh, up nicely. Pung with a big quarter, five in the quarter, 10 in the game. Two point lead for Northport as they bring it up, 40 seconds to go. Thomas on the right side. Northport does not have to shoot. They'll shoot that one. It's blocked. Followed up and blocked again. And a tie-up will give it back to Beale City. Whoa. That was a 15-tap long goal right there. Timeout, 26 seconds to go in the game. And we can get a replay of that. Let's Pretty. watch it again. Northport on top by two, but Beale City now has the ball after this flurry. Ball underneath. Northport puts it up, again, again. I think there could have been a call there. I'll quickly the shot on the left arm. All right, just 26 seconds to go. And Beale City will have the basketball. Trailing by two. All right, now, your Beale City coach, Tom Lavoy. You're down by two with 26 seconds to go. What do you do? You work it around for the good shot. You try for two to go for the tie. You try for three to win it all. Uh, I would, if Sanders if Scott was still in the game, I think I'd try for three, but he's not. And I would like my chances in overtime, you know, without Sanders Scott. That's what I'd be thinking if I were Tom Lavoy over on the Beale City side. I agree with you. I think you work it around, you try and get the good two shot, two, two points. I think you get it whenever you can and then hope you can play defense at the other end because Sanders Scott is not in the ball game. Token pressure now from uh, Northport. Fred Thomas, though, will stay with Matt Fox all right. the way up. Here comes Schaefer. Schaefer all the way to the hole. Nice scoop. He's tied it up with 16 seconds to go. And Northport now calls a timeout. Well, we're talking strategy there. Todd Schaefer just cut the ball underneath his arm, ran at the number three hole and said, try and stop me. That's right, and if you get the basket, then you can maybe force them, because they don't have Scott, they being Northport, don't have Scott available. The best offensive weapon is gone. Here's the move right here. Great move. Oh, nice effort. Boy, I tell you, that's a nice move under any circumstances, yes. but to make that 
Uh, with a team down by two in the waning seconds of the fourth quarter. Schaefer, 21 points, leads Field City. So we have played 31 minutes and 44 seconds, and we are right where we began. All tied up. 78-78, Northport and Beale City. Last D title game here. A lot of folks at home have a tendency to, in this situation, say, well, hey, what's the problem for Northport? You play for the last shot, the worst you can do is overtime. Playing for the last shot and protecting the ball is not nearly as easy as it might seem to some folks at home. I think Northport is probably more concerned with making sure they get a good shot. And Beale City's gonna make them work for it. Yes, they are. They're gonna show a little press. Be interesting to see Denial if they go long on this. Man on man, probably. There but now they, drop back, now they drop back. All right, here Ten we go. Seconds. Jason Stowe. They'll want Thomas to take it with seven. On the left side, Daniel Stowe. Got it! Turn out with two seconds to go. Oh. Daniel Stowe has put his team on top by two. Let's watch it once again. Stowe with uh, 16 points in the ball game. Him thinking of this one right now. Off balance, driving the baseline from his left to his right and puts up the off balance shot. Good move. Cradles the ball and gets the shooter's bounce. That was one tough <laughs> shot. He sandwiched the two defenders. Let's look at it again. Hanging, put it up there. And now with two seconds to go, Beale City will have to go the length of the court. Tom the boy there. No teaching shooting techniques. Well, most likely, we got him where we we're want him. All we need to do is get a basket. Remember now, with the three-point rule, sure. most likely any kind of shot they get here will be a three-point effort, unless they try to throw the ball the length of the court. But right now, two seconds to go, and Northport from the Traverse City area. I think you deny him the two-point shot and make him hit the three-point. You, you throw the dice if you're the if you're Gordy Wick. You deny him the two-point shot. Make them throw up a three-point and win the ball game. My guess is they'll go to Matt Fox or Schaefer. You don't let anybody get in there low for the long pass. They only have two seconds to work with. Keep an eye on Schaefer. He might try and draw a foul here. It's exactly what he tried to do. They didn't call it. A steal. And Northport has won the Class D State Championship. No play, we run along the baseline, try and suffer a defensive man into running into your teammates, but it didn't work. And Northport, with four losses on the season, a surprise winner here, defeating the Beale City Aggies, 80 to 78 for the State Class D Championship. What a game, Rick. Somewhere in the middle of that is Daniel Stowe, and there's a heartbroken Tim Block. The whole Aggie team, of course, is crushed. In time, they'll remember what they've accomplished this year, but right now, the Northport Wildcats on the basket by Daniel Stowe with two seconds to go have won the Class D state title 80 to 78 over Beale City. We'll take a break and come back with the award ceremonies on the Michigan High School Sports Network. You see the Northport Wildcats have won a thrilling Class D final. Now for the award ceremony, public address announcer Howard King. If I may have your attention, please, now we're ready for our presentations in our state Class D championships, the presentations of trophies and medals. Tonight, these will be presented by Mr. Alan Williams, Director of Athletics, North Adams High School, and Secretary Treasurer of the Representative Council of the MHSAA. Mr. Williams will be presenting medals first. The members of the runners-up team in, in state Class D Beale City. Number 10, Mike Zion. Number 11, John Tillman. Fourteen, Matt Miller. Number 
22, Joe Hope. Twenty-three, Blair Cohn. Thirty-four, Gene Curtis. Forty, Dave Sheehan. Forty-two, Larry Cotter. 44, Brian Gould. 12, Matt Fox. 20, Jason Gottlieber. 24, Dan Pong. 30, Todd Schaefer. 32, Tim Block. And received the trophy in the runners-up Class D championship, Coach Tom Lavoie. And now our state champions in Class D North Coast. Number 10, Bradley Crowley. Number 12, Sean Busby. Number 20, Stephen Pop. Twenty-two, Richard Huck. Thirty, Chad Craker. Thirty-two, Joshua Race. Forty-four, Nathan Kalchik. Fifty, Kenneth Pop. 52, Chad Scott. 54, John Smith. 14, Frederick Thomas. 24, Jason Stone. 34, Sanders Scott. 40, Jason Corson. 42, Daniel Stowe. 
As I said at halftime, the ice went out early at Northport this year because their basketball team was melting all that ice and they melted it right at the end with the big bucket by an unheralded shooter to win the state championship. Daniel Stowe with a memory of a lifetime. Every, probably every person who ever played the game uh, as a schoolboy dreamed of making the last second shot to, to win a state championship and Daniel Stowe did just that for that's, his team. That's not to forget his teammates 39 points. Sandra Scott before he went out of the ball game in a great performance. Yes, uh, we'll be joined by Coach Gordy Wick in just a moment, but Scott, uh, with that tremendous effort, 39 points before fouling out, and he finished just one point short of the Class D state title record of 40 points. And that was set back uh, in the 1960s. It was a terrific basketball game. It was a lot of fun. Oh, it certainly was. Racehorse, and uh, we tend to use the cliche a little too much about somebody had to lose it to shame, and it was. But Gordy Wick joining us right now, the winning coach. Coach, congratulations on the championship, and uh, you know it's been a terrific season for you. And really, at what point of the year did you start to think that something special could happen here? Three quarters of the way through the season, we had a real tough conference game, and uh, we played ball one that week. Two two real good teams. We won both games, and um, seemed like there our momentum really started going. Uh, uh, tell me about tonight's game. First of all, Sanders Scott had a brilliant performance, but then you lost him midway through that fourth period. Right, that's tough. Um, I feel confident that when I bring him in around four minutes, when he has four fouls on him, he's typically smart and uh, he doesn't foul out. But um, you got a excited out, there, I think. Yeah, he did some things out of character tonight, but um, better for us in the long run. All right, after Schaefer came back and scored for Beale City to tie it up, you called the timeout, set up a play. It looked to me like you were going, trying to go to Thomas. He was covered. Was Daniel Stowe the primary man, though? Um, we were looking to go to Fred Long. Um, then we had some options set up into that if we, that, that didn't work. But uh, we, we had another play set up, and that um, they always worked right according to the chalkboard. <laughs> <laughs> An honest coach. Well, four of your top six players are, are juniors, and uh, you've got a lot of a lot of players coming back. You could have a great season this year, but right now you just want to savor every moment, I'm sure, of this one. That's right. Uh, we have some key seniors, and I uh, can't think of a better way to have a senior basketball season end. Um, so happy for them, and definitely we'll be a nice team next year. Congratulations, Coach. Thank nice you very much. You. Nice job. Go Thank celebrate you. with your team. We shall. Thank you. Coach Gordy Wick of the Class D state champion Northport Wildcats who defeated Beale City 70 to 68 in this one. Good one. We got one more to go. 80 to 78, let's get the score right there. They, they scored so many points that we lost track. They did win by two points. And uh, we've still got, as you said, got one more to go to the Class E State Championship game. Before that, though, we've also got some highlights from the girls' basketball finals and more. We'll come back with that and more on the Michigan High School Sports Network. <laughs> 